Hi guys, Mr. Kane here. Hi guys, Mrs. G. Good to see you again. If you're not part of the precipitate, you're part of the solution. Right into it. Yeah, unit okay. 14. All right, unit solutions. 14. Here we go. Solutions. All right, goals for unit 14. Describe the properties of solutions. Identify the different parts of a solution. Right, so You've got solution. Right, the solution, right. right so the solution, solution is made, made up of parts. of parts. Oh my God, we're thinking yeah. alike. Solvent. Solute, know those definitions. Differentiate among saturated, unsaturated, and supersaturated solutions. Determine the types of solutions and number of grams of solute graphically using solubility curves. Wow, that's, that's a mouthful. That's a mouth, yeah, that was blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So we're going to look at lot. graphs. Yes, okay. basically speaking. You're going to read a graph. And? Measure the concentration of solutions in terms of molarity and mass percent which you're going to need a calculator for. Okay. Oh, and calculate dilution. There you there. go, another calculator. There, there we go. So two, two times the calculator. So it's a definition of a solution. So Since yeah, what exactly what is a solution? A solution is homogenous. Mm -hmm. Reminder, homo, homo meaning the same, genius meaning kind of looking like that. So it's looking the same throughout. Yep. So it's a mixture that where a uh, sample from one part of the mixture is going to be identical to samples from the other parts. Right. Like the air it, you breathe right. is a homogeneous mixture of nine different gases. You don't get more oxygen because you're in the gym than you do in this classroom. No, no. It's exactly the same makeup. Yeah, if you want more oxygen, you have to go to the hospital and get hooked up to right. the tank. That's pure oxygen, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Kool-Aid Kool is a nice is a nice homogeneous solution. The way they tell you to make it on the package. All right. You know, if you don't make it the way they make, they tell you to make it on the package, and you do like I used to do and put way too much sugar in. <laughs> Then it's not homogenous. Not so much homogenous yeah. anymore. Yeah, because then you got stuff floating on the bottom. Brass. Which I find very interesting because note that a solution is not necessarily limited to liquid phases. Ah, yeah. Nowhere does it say that it has to be liquid. Nope. And the air around us is a gas. Yeah, we so just discussed all three phases. Solid liquids and gases. A very solution can be either a solid, a liquid, or a gas. And there's an equation down here, Miss G. Yes, because a solute plus a solvent will sum up to be the solution. I don't understand. Solute, solvent? Solute and solvent make up the solution. The solute will be either the solid that is dissolved or the smallest amount of the solution. The smaller amount of the solution. The smaller part. Or a smaller part. A solvent will be the dissolver of a solid or the largest part of a solution. And the reason there's kind of like two categories is, what if you are dealing with a liquid in a liquid? Then how do you distinguish solute versus solvent? It's got to be small, the smaller Smallest amount of solute. Smallest amount versus the largest amount, like 70% isopropyl alcohol, which you buy at the grocery store. Oh, you use that on your cuts to right, clean them off. Right, use it on your cuts. We used to use it on our newly pierced ears. 70% isopropyl alcohol literally says 70% isopropyl. That's the solvent. And then the other part is water? 30% is water. Oh, okay. So right. water is the solute. Okay, so solubility and polarity. Okay. It says here likes dissolve like. Likes dissolve likes. So that means that water's polar, so it will dissolve polar things. Correct. Right. Polar molecules. Yep. Okay. Real life applications. Oh, cool. Vitamin C. Vitamin C is a water-soluble vitamin. Yeah, and sometimes people say when you're getting a cold, take as much vitamin C as you want, right? Right. So that you can get rid of the cold. Um, that's okay because you're not going to overdose on vitamin C. Right, because your body doesn't absorb it. You pee it out. Right, exactly. As, as long as you've got enough uh, urine, you can yep. get rid of it. So yes. You're in luck. Because it is water-soluble, it goes into your bloodstream, not your muscles or fat. Now, of course, if you took the whole jar at once, that bad things happen, but... Um, within reasonable amounts you can take. Right. Uh, vitamin A, though, on the other hand, is fat soluble. Is fat soluble. Will not dissolve in water, will only dissolve in fat because it is not a polar molecule. And no matter how um, uh, athletic you are, you got some fat. So uh, if you take too much vitamin A, it'll build up in your fat. Yeah. And you'll overdose on it. So that can be a bad thing. Ooh, definitions. Miscible versus immiscible. Mm -hmm. uh, so miscible liquids are those that are completely soluble within each other, and immiscible liquids do not mix. Okay. We've got a 
grand example of immiscible liquids over here. Oil and vinegar. Oil and vinegar, or oil and water. Um, uh, they uh, salad dressing, right? Yeah, salad dressing. Yeah. Okay. Solubility of ions in water. Ooh, I remember solubility. Wasn't that solubility rules? Yeah, we did solubility rules before. Yep. Um, uh, it turns out that certain things are soluble in water. We can look them up on the solubility chart. Right. right. I just had, didn't have to memorize anything for solubility rules. The chart was always given to right. you. But the basic reminder here is that when something does get dissolved, a salt does get dissolved in water, uh, it is actually disassociated. The ions separate. So I see some, I see a nice link here, Mr. Kane. The sodium chloride is the solute. Okay. The beaker of water is the solvent. Uh-huh. And the final picture there on the right is the solution oh. of aqueous sodium chloride. How something plus something equals something. Yep. That's great. Ooh, this is what happens at the super submicroscopic level, huh? Yeah, exactly. You got your polar water molecule here. Now notice the partial charges. The hydrogens are partially positive, oxygen's partially negative. Yep. And they are going to latch on to this negative ion here, the anion. Uh, on the other hand, the cations are going to get carried away by the oxygen end of the water, the negative end of it. So when the sodium chloride dissociates, the water molecules surround it in a very particular orientation. Mm -hmm. And you can see here the ions. Uh, here's the anion. It's sur surrounded completely by the positive portion of the polar water molecule. And down here the cation is completely surrounded by the negative portion of the water molecule. Solubility of polar substances in water. Okay, so something like this. This looks like uh, C2 ethanol. Yeah, ethanol. Yep. Mm -hmm. And you can see that uh, just a partial part of it is actually polar. Uh, so that means that only this part of it is going to interact with water very well. So it'll dissolve in water. It's not going to dissociate because, no, of course, it's not a soluble salt. Because this covalent bond won't be broken. Right, but by the, the water molecules. The end there, that oxygen-hydrogen end, makes it just polar enough to dissolve in water, and likes dissolve likes. Well, they got some dots here, and they call that something, don't they? They call that an intermolecular force. It's an electrostatic attraction. Ooh, Ooh octane. Uh, so we got octane here. That's what they put in gasoline, isn't it? Yep. Uh, the octane molecule is... Eight. I don't see any polar bond here. Yep, the carbon-hydrogen bonds are not polar. We found that out with the difference in electronegativity. So that entire molecule is nonpolar. So it's completely nonpolar. So this won't dissolve in water. What will it do? It'll just separate completely. Oh, kind of like uh, kind of like salad dressing. So, yeah, it'll sit on top of the water. Oh, kind of like that. Yes, kind of like. Although it's pretty. And that is pretty. Yeah. But it doesn't. Well, water will not dissolve it. So that's what we see on the at, at gas stations in, yep. when it rains. Any right? of the hydrocarbons, water will not dissolve any of them. Right. Factors that affect the rate of dissolving solids. Oh, before. Well, temperature makes sense because, of course, the hotter something is, the more you can dissolve. Right. At a higher temperature rate, the rate of uh, dissolving goes up. Right. Right. Uh, particle size. Uh, do you want to uh, dissolve something that's a large chunk or tiny little pieces? Right. Because uh, look at the pictures. It's easier to attack the right-hand picture than it is the left-hand side. Right. So the water molecules are going to have a lot yeah. easier time getting yeah. around. It's kind of like military. Okay. So as the particle size decreases, the rate increases. Okay. Okay. Uh, mixing. Uh, you can mix things, and the more you mix it, yeah. the faster things dissolve, right? Right. right. Sugar, tea. Yeah. And uh, sometimes the nature of the solu solvent or the solute, we mentioned that before, the polar yeah. and nonpolar. Uh, polar things tend to dissolve better in polar substances. Because it's not, it doesn't seem to be happening anymore. Ah, okay, definitions? so definitions for solubility here. Okay. Uh, it turns out there are three different types of solutions. All right. There's an unsaturated solution where you have just a little bit of solute in it, okay. relatively speaking. And you could dissolve more. So All if right. you put a pinch more in, it would dissolve. I think I equate this to lemonade. Okay. Making lemonade, the powder in the lemonade. So my unsaturated solution is not enough powder. 
Okay, so you, you could add some more powder right. and it'll still dissolve. You did not make it right. There is too little powder in your lemonade. Okay, uh, and a saturated solution is one where you are not going to be able to dissolve any more into it. Right, it's the perfect glass of lemonade. Everything has dissolved, it looks beautiful, it tastes great. It's and if, perfect. And if I added a spoonful more of uh, the lemonade powder? Yuck, be it, too much. It, it wouldn't dissolve, right? It'd fall to the bottom. That is correct. And then finally, a supersaturated solution is one where you somehow get it to dissolve more than it's supposed to. Supersaturated solution is like way too much powder in your lemonade. Yeah. Matter of fact, I know a little bit about supersaturated solutions. My bees make supersaturated supersaturated solutions. Yeah. Honey is a supersaturated solution of sugar and water. Oh. Huh. There's about ninety. Um, shoot, no. There's about eighty-seven percent sugar and about thirteen percent water in honey. Oh. Huh. And one of the ways you can tell a uh, supersaturated solution is that it sometimes will form crystals yeah. in it. Uh, sometimes if you leave honey sit long enough, it actually forms crystals. So is that kind of like saying the excess comes out yeah, the excess of kinda, the water? Yeah, it kind of crystallizes right. out. Uh, and uh, you'll notice that there's an arrow here, guys. Uh, there's an increasing concentration as we go from left to right. Which would make sense. The left side is too little. Right. The middle is perfect. Mm -hmm. The right side is too much. Yeah, it reminds me of the three little bears. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so here's an example of a supersaturated solution. This one was made up of sodium acetates. Uh, it was made up by uh, heating up some water and putting the sodium acetate in it and dissolving as much sodium acetate as we could at that higher temperature. So you can dissolve more stuff at a higher temperature. That's a good, that's a good generalization, yeah. What happens when the temperature comes back down? Because you can't unless you keep it on the hot well, plate. Right. If it comes back down at a reasonable rate, you just leave it sit there and cool, okay. it's going to stay in solution just like you see here. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Same as honey. All, All right. right. Um, however, these supersaturated solutions tend to be a bit fragile. Okay. So if you disturb them somehow, you can actually make them crystallize. Yep, because they're unstable. Some of them are easier to disturb than others. This one's really easy to disturb. You can actually just tap the side of the beaker with your with your with a pen, and that'll be enough. Uh, or sometimes people like to toss one more crystal in over the top. Yeah, yeah. You, you just—it's like the straw that broke the camel's back. So if you watch very carefully, you're going to see it drop. We're going to drop a crystal in right about now. There it is. Oh, neato. And it looks kind of like it's snowing or something, but that's actually crystallization form, crystals forming.